Hello and welcome to this presentation, which is about how to write your article properly. The presentation gives you a general overview about the typical structure for a, for a scientific paper and how to build your article up, going through each section and giving you some advice if you like, what you should write, what you shouldn't. The, uh, the presentation uh, is designed for PG students and for junior researchers. The typical structure of, the, uh, of any scientific paper consists of three main groups. In the first group, you can find the title, author's name, abstracts, and keywords. This group is available online for everyone for free. Those, you uh, ad, uh, you're supposed to advertise your work here. And index and, and indexing of your work mainly depends on this group because when you search for something online, the search engine goes directly to look at what you are, for, uh, what you are searching for in, uh, in, in, in these group and the keywords, and the abstracts, and the titles that already published online for the paper that's already published online. So you need to be super careful when you write every single word in this group. And remember, you, you advertise your work here. The abstract, the abstract has to be attractive and catchy for the uh, targeted readers. The second group is the main body of your article. It's called EMERID, the acronym for Introduction, Method, Results, and Discussion. Remember, the, the, mean, the, the mean message you want to deliver is here. All your work, all, everything, you, uh, everything uh, you have done uh, is here. So again, you need to be careful when you write this, uh, the, uh, this group of your work. The, the end, the, um, in the end, the last group is, uh, is the conclusion, acknowledge, uh, conclusions, acknowledge, acknowledgements, references, and sometimes supporting material. This is the typical structure for, uh, uh, for any scientific paper. However, some, uh, uh, some journals uh, mixing these up, uh, for example, some journals uh, um, combine result, results and discussion in one section. Before going to some details of each section of your work, we need to know what is the logical way, what is the best way of build my article, of build your article up. Let's say you've done all the experimental work or the simulation or all the work that you intended to do. And then uh, you decided you decided to publish your work. You sit down and write uh, and um, uh, and start writing up. What you should do the first? Actually, the best way to build your um, uh, your article or your paper up is explained here. First thing to do is uh, preparing all the figures and tables and put them in your um, uh, in your uh, in, uh, in your writing in a logical consequence and then prepare the caption for each one of them. After doing so, you need to start with writing the method, the methods that you, uh, that you followed in your work, everything you've done, everything uh, um, uh, you followed in, uh, in your work, in your experimental work or in your simulation or so on. Then start to write, to start to describe the figures and tables in the results section. After that, write the discussion, which is the interpretation of the results of your work. When you've done these, you should go to the you should go to the conclusions part and then the introduction part. 
same as you can see the introduction part is after doing the uh, the method result the method result discussion and conclusion and the final step is writing the abstract keywords and title as you can see the final step is writing the title and the first step is putting the figures and table that's because these these part of the of your work is the is the most important part of your of the work as as mentioned earlier you advertise your work here the, this part has to be attractive for them for, for the readers for them for the targeted readers so you need to be careful when you're writing these poem this these sections you need to be um, uh, you, you need to be again. You need to, to you need to be careful with the writing this. Uh, and uh, again, the abstract. Uh, 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 I stress this again. The abstract has to be uh, catchy and attractive for the readers. Let's go through every single section in some details, uh, starting from title. Here we need to answer the question: What makes the title strong? What makes the title um, the, the title good? Um, the, the title is good when it serves uh, its uh, defined purpose. When it catch them, the, the, the catch the attention of readers. When it catch the attention of the targeted reader of the community um, uh, of the uh, of the field. Uh, the community of your field. Those there are some there are some things you need to uh, you, you should do or uh, others you need to avoid them. For example, the title has to be attractive, as we mentioned before, for the targeted for the targeted readers. It has to be as short as possible. It has to be precise and adequate. When we say when it describes the uh, the content of your work, then uh, the, uh, the goal of uh, publishing a paper for any researchers uh, is being within a community, within the community of the field, and the title uh, and the, uh, the the title of your paper serves the best in this uh, context. If your title is strong and good. And uh, well describe the content of your work. It might catch them the attention of the people in your community. And furthermore, you might you might get some uh, some citation just because you've got um, a good title and uh, attract attract the people in the community. Those again, uh, the title is extremely important in your work. And finally, I'd like to highlight that in, the, in writing the title, you shouldn't uh, write any uh, technical jargon and uh, any abbreviation. So try to avoid technical jargons and abbreviation as much as possible. The authorship or the name of the authors. Here we've got the first author. The definition of this is um, um, dep really depends on the culture and the disciplinary. It varies from culture to culture and from disciplinary to disciplinary. But in general, the first author is the person who mainly conduct the work, collect the results, and interpreted them. This is the, 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 the general definition of the first author. The, co the corresponding author is the author who submitted the paper or the work to a journal. It possibly the first author, or in some time for for, for BG students, uh, it possible uh, it might be the the supervisor of the work. Co-author is uh, uh, co-author is defined as the person who who has done some uh, some secondary work or some supported some supported work, for example, doing some experiments out of the experience of the first author, 
or doing some analysis, data analysis out of experience of the first author or out, uh, out of the experience of the supervisor of the work in case of uh, uh, PG students. Those co-author, um, uh, co-author is anyone who uh, who has done or who uh, who has some um, uh, some contribution to the work. And the authorship, ethically, you have to um, avoid ghost author, which is the way which is excluding um, uh, some people. Uh, who uh, who have some contribution to your work, excluding some people who have um, who have done some work in um, some some work in your um, some work in your uh, in your project, and you also um, uh, you ha you also have to avoid gift author or um, the author who hasn't done anything in your work or who has no contribution to your work. So you need to, ethically, you need to avoid these two kinds of authors, ghost author and gift author. As mentioned earlier, keywords are used in indexing your work or find your work online. So you need to be careful when you select these keywords, these, these few words, they are super important. They are super important in, advertise, in advertising your work. So you need to be precise with them. Uh, you need to avoid the abbreviation as much as possible. And using uh, only well-known abbreviation. Because as I said uh, earlier, these words are used to index your work, to find your work online. So if you want to catch the attention to catch the, um, the, the search engine, uh, you need to select these, word, uh, these words carefully. Let's take an example. Let's say this is a, um, uh, a paper title, an experimental study on evacuated tube solar collector using supercritical CO2. Here is uh, an example of the good keywords for this title. We don't know what is the term, what is the, what has done in this work, but from the title we can select some good keywords: solar collector, supercritical CO2, solar energy, etc., etc. Possibly writing the abstract is the most difficult part of writing your paper. Those we always leave it to the end of, uh, of, uh, of our writing. That's because the abstract has to summarize all your work, method, results, conclusion in a single brief paragraph. And uh, uh, in, many, um, uh, in many journals, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the abstract has to be very short, less than possibly in some, uh, some uh, journals, it's less than 200 words. So we need to be super precise and accurate uh, when we're talking about um, all our method, results, and conclusion um, by using this limited number of words. Uh, and remember, you are advertising your work uh, by using the abstract for many researchers, many, many researchers. Uh, you search for something and you, uh, the, title, um, catch your the title catch your attention and then you open the abstract and then stop writing, um, stop reading the, uh, the rest of the paper because the abstract is weak. Those, we need to write the abstract in the same strong manner that we did in the, um, uh, in the title. Abstract, again, is very important. And it is, as mentioned here, it is a free of charge advertisement of your work. An introduction part. First of all, you need to address what is the problem that you, that you are working on. Are you working on uh, developing a new material for a particular application? Are you trying to uh, explain 
or investigate uh, uh, unexpected failure for uh, a car engine, for example. So you need to address uh, what is the aim of your work, what is the goal of your work, why did you start working on this uh, particular application, why did you uh, decide to work on the uh, on this um, uh, on this field on or this application, and if you proposed a hypothesis for your uh, for your work, for example. You are working on unexpected failure in a car engine, and you propose that this unexpected failure uh, came from uh, unexpected fracture in some part of it. You need to explain why did you propose this, and what is the logical reason of this uh, hypothesis. You need to uh, put all these stuff uh, in the introduction, explaining why. Uh, why did you propose this hypothesis? Uh, um, uh, do you uh, do you depend do you depend on uh, some um, some reading, or uh, do you depend on uh, some events that you already observed? You need to uh, put all these stuff in the in the introduction. And then the introduction is supposed to to be is supposed to be a reviewer for um, for some um, some origin and uh, important work in your field. And I advise you, all the researchers, I advise all the researchers to know what what are the big names in their field. You need to know what are the what are the big names. Uh, the big figures in your realm, in your field, uh, read for them, and uh, if your work is the same as their work, uh, cite them. It is quite important to do so because this gives an indication that and then uh, for, for the reviewers and for the editor of the journal that you know what you are doing. The other advice is uh, uh, include some recent review um, um, uh, reviews. Some recent reviews, some recently published reviews, and this serves the same. It gives a good indication for the uh, for the editor and for the reviewers, uh, the, for the, the journal reviewers, uh, the journal referees, uh, that you you know what you are doing. Uh, also remember that you uh, you you should avoid any irrelevant references. And uh, uh, I mean by irrelevant references uh, that you are refer that you are referencing uh, some uh, some work uh, which just tangent your work uh, is not directly related to your work. Uh, and for, uh, the reason for this uh, is, uh, for example, in increasing the number of references or reference your own your own previous work. Uh, or reference your um, uh, your your friend's work. This is not good. This uh, the, the, this may uh, this makes them uh, your introduction uh, very weak. Uh, also, the introduction um, uh, has to has to be um, has to be consistent with the uh, with the guideline of the uh, of the journal that you are submit uh, submit your work in. You need to write. You need to read the uh, the guide the guide for authors for the journal that you submit the work in. The other thing I want uh, I would like to stress here is what's called unique introduction. Uh, let's say you are working on a bigger project, and um, uh, uh, it is impossible to uh, submit this, um, this project in one go by any way. So you decided to split the work in series of papers, let's say two papers. Even though in spite of, um, uh, in spite of working on the, uh, in spite of being the, the two papers uh, uh, related to the same project, uh, the introduction of each one of each paper has to be unique has to be uh, different from the, uh, intro, from the introduction of the other paper. The introduction of the first paper, for example, has to be different from the introduction of the second paper. 
it is unacceptable, uh, unacceptable to submit two papers with the same introduction in spite of being uh, the same uh, in spite of being the two papers uh, um, um, walk, um, walk on the uh, uh, on the same direction or part of the uh, same uh, project in the method part of your work you need to talk about uh, what you've done what the procedure that you follow for example if you used a material you need to talk about this material in details have you produced this material but you by yourself if you do so how uh, how did you produce it did you cast it or if you bought it where uh, was the name of the company and in some cases what is the the batch number of the material for some chemicals you need to you need to mention in details the chemical composition of the material that you worked on equally you need to talk about the equipment that you used in details uh, for example are you working um, are you working on equipment that well defined for example scanning electron microscopies uh, optical microscopies uh, tensile testers uh, um, and, it's, um, and so on. In this case, you need to mention in details what, uh, what is the name of the company, the brand of the equipment, and the model of it. If you used a software, you need to mention the name of the software, the name of the company, and the version of the software. <clears throat> also, uh, you need to talk about the work procedure the work procedure that you followed in details in such a way that any re um, uh, uh, anyone reads your work can you reproduce it easily. Those, this, is, this is very important. Remember, you are talking to experts, the editors and the reviewers of, uh, of the journals, of the scientific journals are experts in your field. So it's not a good idea to play a game with them or hide some stuff on them. <clears throat> if you, if you uh, followed a, a previous uh, published procedure, you, uh, you can't copy, you can't simply copy and paste it. This is a plagiarism. So you need to refer to the uh, previous paper that you, that you, follow, that you followed. And uh, uh, if you decide to write the procedure in your paper, you need to paraphrase it and refer to the paper. So this, I mean, this is quite important. Uh, copy and paste is not allowed in scientific uh, publication. It is a plagiarism. And the plagiarism uh, uh, described as a scientific crime. So we need definitely to avoid them. Uh, and generally speaking, in general, past simple tense is used in this uh, part of your work. In the results section, uh, we need to talk about our results uh, from the name. We need to talk about the results of our work. And here, we need to talk about the primary section, the primary part of, uh, of our results. For example, if we test a tensile stress for a material or the tensile property for a material, we need to put in, in, the, in the results pass, we need to put the results, just only the results of the, um, uh, of the tensile test. For example, yield stress, ultimate tensile stress, or so on. And keep the data, uh, we, the, the, the detailed data for the curve for the supplementary material. So we need to present only the primary um, data, the primary importance, uh, the primary important data in this uh, part. Uh, we we also need to uh, need to keep this part as easy as possible to follow by using illustrations and figures as much as possible. For example, using one figure is better than using a boring long table. And it is, uh, it is even more um, easy 
to follow than uh, follow a numbers in the uh, num uh, follow numbers in tables. Those illustration and figures are favored in the uh, um, um, in the scientific papers. Um, when you when you when you talk about when you talk about the result section, you need to arrange it as we mentioned in the uh, in the beginning of the um, of this presentation that you need to keep the uh, logical consequence of the results. Uh, um, for example, you started on um, you started on investigation investigation of some materials. Uh, so you need to tell the story the, the, in, in a logical consequence. And in this context, uh, it is it is highly recommended uh, to um, uh, subdivide your results uh, into categories. Uh, again, to our um, uh, to our example that we uh, we did some investigation, some extended inve inve investigation on a material. For example, we did some uh, mechanical investigation and uh, um, some physical properties investigation. It is highly recommended, or it is it is quite important to uh, subdivide the, the results part into the mechanical part in one subdivision and the uh, physical properties in, in another subdivision. This is quite important and makes the the um, uh, the, um, uh, the reader uh, follows the uh, the work easily. Very important thing: highlight them. In the outcome, the most important outcome of your work. What is what is the most significant fund, funds of your work? You need to highlight it in this section. And obviously, when you talk about figures uh, or tables, you need to, um, to use a present uh, present simple tense. For example, the figure three shows. Figure three and four uh, indicate, or something like that. The figure has to do the job of it. Uh, uh, it. It has to be clear and not crowded. For example, this figure uh, does the job of it. Uh, uh, the, the author successfully uh, compiled the behavior of a material under different testing conditions. These are different, these are different co uh, testing conditions. So the author um, uh, compile the behavior of the material under these testing condition um, uh, by keeping the the scale of x and y the same for the six figures. And it's obvious to note that the behavior of this material under this condition is different from the behavior of this of the same material at the, uh, under this condition, and it is quite similar to the behavior of the material under this um, this testing condition so the uh, so the figure the figure is quite clear even for us we don't know what the, what are these we don't know what the what what uh, what the uh, what the meaning of this of this figure but we clearly understand that there uh, there is a different there is a difference in the behavior of the material under different uh, under dif different testing conditions for any imaging uh, microscope images or uh, electron microscopy images or even camera imaging we need to put uh, the scale bar of the image for example in these four images the authors uh, put the scale bar which shows us clearly shows us uh, the scale the scale of this image and by using the scale bar for example the, the scale bar of this image is 50 micrometer so we roughly know that the diameter of this uh, particle is about 100 120 so the, the scale bar is super important uh, in, uh, in images and we definitely we need to put the scale bar for any kind of imaging. It is also super important to show the legend of your uh, figure, the legend of your figure, 
and the uh, the scale the, uh, the scale of the axis the scale of x axis and y axis and the, the the axis title these are super important to show clearly it is also important to put the error bar for your um, for your curve for example the error bar here shows that the, uh, the, the the error around this point is this the error bar is super important um, and it shows that you repeated the walk and your results is reliable we mentioned that using figures is better than using tables but in some cases we um, uh, we forced to use tables for example here um, um, a kind of investigation uh, that came out with these results and when we use table we have to be careful with it every single every single row has uh, has to have the uh, the unit here the unit of each one and the uh, and the error bar uh, the, the 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 error the um, uh, the error has to be mentioned in the uh, primary data for example in this paper the primary data is this one and this one those the the error the error of these data here and here is mentioned in the table and ignoring the rest of them uh, the rest of the um, uh, values the error the, the error for the rest of the table uh, for the for the rest of the data those again the the, the units the units has to be in, has to be uh, uh, on the table and the error the error of the primary data has to be in the table as well. Illustrations is also important. For example, in this, in this figure here, the author illustrated the work procedure, uh, explaining the, uh, the, the work condition, the, the testing condition. For example, the temperature used here was uh, 37 and 50, the potential was that, and the, the protein concentration was that, and then the characterization method, where these three characterization methods. So by looking at this, at this illustration, we can, we can uh, take a general overview of the work procedure of um, the work procedure followed in this paper. Furthermore, the, the, single, the, the work procedure of every single experiment is explained here. By the way, this is one, one, of, um, uh, one of my uh, own paper. I used this illustration because the work procedure was a bit new. No one has done it before. So it was necessary to illustrate what I've done uh, in, 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 in a figure like this to make it easier to follow by the reader. In the discussion part, you are interpreting your results. Here, you, you show how deeply you understand your results. It is the part of your work when you show your understanding or your, your research skills because the research, the research job is not, is not just doing an experiment and come out with some results. It's, it is the process of interpreting the results and understand them. So the, the interpreting and understand the results is, is one of the most important parts of your work. Those, some, uh, some researchers, or a lot of researchers actually, uh, think that the discussion part is the most, is definitely the most important part of the, of the work. Many papers, many, many papers got rejected just because the discussion was weak. The discussion was just repeti repetition of the uh, results, um, results section. So uh, the discussion part is the, again, it is the most important part and it is the most scientific part of your work. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, here in this part, uh, in this part uh, the interpretation of your results uh, and not repeating them again 
and in this part you need to compare your results with others with others published paper and in this context you need uh, you need uh, do not ever uh, avoid or ignore uh, the, the, the other works or the other paper uh, the, uh, the other uh, papers that uh, that not in, in agreement with your, with your work or um, uh, um, that the, the other papers, the other workers, the other researchers uh, that that got um, other other results uh, different if you, uh, from you uh, from yours. But instead, you need to mention them and they try to convince the reader that your results is better or your results is more logical. This is the way to do it, not ignoring them. And in, in discussion part, uh, avoid any white terms uh, like higher temperature, a range of loads, uh, or something like that. Instead, you need to use uh, quantitative terms. Uh, you need to talk about numbers, uh, numbers specific. So you need to be specific and precise when you interpret your work or when you compare your work with others' work. Yeah. Uh, also, you need to make it objective, not subjective. And this is quite important. Being objective, based on, uh, based on facts, not subjective, based on imagination, or based on uh, some, kind of, some wrong conclusions. Again, this part shows how deeply you understand your work. How, um, how can you um, extend, extend the knowledge in the field? Also, and then, uh, also, it is highly recommended to avoid overestimation of your uh, of your results. For example, you are working on uh, developing a new material for a particular application, and you've got a good results. The material is um, uh, you you've been able to develop the material, even though it is recommended to um, to to talk about. Uh, this uh, this improvement or this um, uh, successful uh, by using hedging language, by using um, um, uh, uh, cautious, cautious language, and this is quite quite important when you talk about uh, uh, your results. Uh, this is quite important. Uh, um, 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 avoid 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 the, uh, saying uh, this is the uh, this is the first time someone has done this. Instead, you need to use, uh, for example, for the best of uh, for the best of the author's knowledge. This is the first time someone has done this, for example. So you need to use hedging language and um, um, uh, estimate your work. Do not overestimate your work. You also need to um, avoid statements that go beyond what your results support. The statement that uh, uh, that um, uh, that based on the statements that based on imagination, or um, um, uh, based on um, incorrect conclusion. Again, you need to be specific. You need to uh, you need to um, uh, discuss your work based on the results that you've got. And obviously, uh, you need to avoid any new terms, any new technical terms here. Uh, instead, you have to mention all the technical terms and all uh, all the abbreviation in the in the previous parts, like introduction or results or uh, or method. It is quite possible that a lot of researchers. Uh, uh, read you, uh, your uh, abstract and conclusion, jump directly to conclusion, because they, uh, they interest with the, with the results that you came out with, not with the method or not with the discussion. They interest with, the, with only the results. So um, again, you need to be careful with this part. For example, do not repeat the, the abstract. As the conclusion and abstract serve different purpose, the conclusion serve different purpose than the, the abstract. 
It is not repetition of the abstracting. In, in spite of they are saving them, they are uh, serving the, 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 same, um, the same direction. Also, you need to be clear and highlight the most important funding in your work. This is quite important. The most important uh, funding in your work has to be highlighted here. And uh, furthermore, you need to uh, you need to insert a brief justification for this uh, for for these for these uh, important funding. So you need to list the important funding with the, a brief justification. As you've done the justification in your in your uh, discussion, you need to uh, brief it, summarize it as much as possible, and put it here with the with, with the with the funding. Uh, it, it is recommended that uh, you can suggest um, a, a, a future work or uh, something that you can you can do and uh, you you could you couldn't have done in uh, in your work uh, and suggest it as a future work for others or for yourself. Do not list the the results here again. This is not the results part. Uh, the, um, uh, all the results are already listed in the results part. Uh, do not list it there uh, in, in this part. Uh, and generally speaking, uh, use present simple tense here because you came to a you, you came to a conclusion. So a conclusion conclusion has to be um, in in uh, present simple tense. After you, uh, you've done your work, you need to acknowledge uh, all the helps that you've got through this um, through your work. So you need to acknowledge the, um, the helps of the advisors, of your colleagues, um, uh, of, um, uh, of the financial supports and funders. And this is quite important. If you've got a grant number, you need to mention it here because every single grant Comes out with the uh, comes out with the with the number of papers published on this grant number. So it is quite important for the funders and for the grant uh, for the for the financial supports that their grants number uh, mentioned in the acknowledgements. You need to acknowledge the the helps of the proofreaders, for example, or for the suppliers uh, that that um, um, that supply um, material for free or equipment or equipment or something like that. So you need to acknowledge all the helps that you've got through the work. References. The first recommendation is to not use too many or too uh, too little. Um, um, uh, references. This is a quite depends on the disciplinary or on the journal that you submit your work um, you work on. Um, and the 25 to 60 appears to be acceptable for a full length research paper. This number, this um, this range of number looks fine. For example, we don't expect. 100, 150 uh, references for um, for um, uh, for um, uh, um, a research paper, full-length research paper. This is quite um, this is quite high number of uh, of references. <coughs> uh, ensure that the, uh, that that uh, you have fully understand uh, what you are referencing. Uh, this is quite important. Uh, if you um, if you have uh, uh, some um, uh, some misunderstanding of the reference, do not refer to it. Do not cite it, because possibly you understand that you uh, you do not uh, you don't fully understand uh, the idea of this reference. Uh, and uh, um, uh, when you refer when you when you refer to it when you cite it, you face. You, uh, you put your conclusion on, um, on a wrong understanding, uh, on incorrect understanding. So try to fully understand what you are referring to. Also, avoid, again, this mentioned earlier, avoid excessive self-citation. This is, this, this, is, this is not acceptable. Self-citation, excessive self-citation is not acceptable. A lot of a, a, a lot of people recommend you to um, to cite your work, and this is good. 
but cite your work when you need to cite it. Do not cite your work, you do not cite your work just because it is your work. Cite it when you cite it when you when you definitely need to cite it, when you have to cite it. Or you, where, where, when uh, you work based on your work, my, my previous work, uh, you need to cite it in this case. And uh, another important, uh, another important uh, recommendation is uh, avoid, uh, some, avoid excessive citing from the same institution or from the same region in the world. This is not good. You need to make a variation in your references. Uh, you need to cite two papers from Europe, from, your, uh, from America, from China, from Middle East. You need to make a variation um, uh, of, um, uh, of, uh, of references. Uh, that's to, uh, uh, th this is because um, uh, you need to show that you understand, you understand the, the work, that, um, you understand your work carefully, you understand your work fully. And this cannot be this cannot be done if you if your references is just from one institution or from one country or one region in the world, because possibly the understanding of um, um, the understanding of the of, of the field in this part of the work on this institution is not is not good. So m m m making this uh, put you in a, put you in a trouble. You need to read uh, for different authors, for different from different institutions, from different parts of the world, uh, from, uh, from different parts of the world. Um, uh, and it's quite important when you submit a paper for a particular journal, you need to conform strictly to the references style given in the guide of authors, guide for authors. And I show you uh, what is the guide of the, of, of, of authors in the next slide. Use the reference use reference manager software like Mendeley and EndNote. I, I strongly recommend everyone to use um, uh, uh, reference manager uh, software. And I strongly recommend Mendeley because it's free. It is supported, it's supported by Elsevier. So it's, um, uh, uh, and it, it works very, very nice. I've been using it for six years. So it's, um, um, I never had any issue with it. Mendeley is very nice. It works very nice. Uh, there are many, many uh, uh, reference style, citation style uh, you can use uh, based on the, uh, on the, uh, on the guide, uh, guide of authors for the journal you are um, going to submit in. Here is an example for the homepage of one of the uh, best um, uh, best journal in my field. It is Acta Materiola. And I, I'd like to go through some important part in this page. So the, the editor in chief, the, the editor in chief name is here. And if you want to know the other editorial board, you need to click here to get the other editorial board and the brief history of them, of each one of them. Site score is here, impact factor is here, and uh, you can read some extra information about the, uh, the journal by looking at this part. Again, site score, impact factor, five years impact factor, Shimago journal ranking, and, and more, more and more um, um, information about the uh, about the journal. If you go down uh, and get um, uh, and go to more in, uh, more information, you can get even the rejection rate, or uh, how many uh, how many papers submitted to the journal uh, and how many of them rejected. And for this journal, the, accept the, the acceptance rate, I guess, is uh, less than 20%. So less than 20% of the total number of the um, uh, papers submitted to this journal, less than 20% less than accepted and the rest just rejected. Also, before you submit your paper to any journal, you need to read, definitely you need to read the guide for authors. And by clicking here, you can download the guide for, uh, for authors or read it online. 
and in guide of authors uh, you can um, you can um, you can have an idea about the style of writing in you in this journal for example the style of captions of figures and um, figures and tables uh, the style of uh, um, for um, uh, heading the style of references etc etc so you need to go through the guide of authors uh, guide for authors uh, before you submit your paper to, uh, to uh, your paper to any journal here is an important web page it's called the shimago journal and country rank in this web page all the classified journals in the world are ranked here all the countries are ranked here as well based on their uh, scientific activity uh, United States uh, is the best country in the world uh, based on this uh, based on this way uh, way page uh, on this ranking. Uh, United States is the best, uh, followed by China and then United Kingdom uh, and then Germany and so on. Iraq placed as seven uh, as seventeenth in this ranking, uh, coming after a lot of countries in the region like Iran, Turkey, Jordan, uh, Egypt, uh, Tunisia. Algeria, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Lebanon. Iraq came, uh, come up, comes after all these countries in the region. Finally, I'd like to finish my, my presentation today uh, by talking about uh, the H index, uh, how to determine the H index for yourself uh, or for anyone else. Let's, let's say that the, uh, there is an author who published seven papers uh, and, uh, uh, and the papers uh, got cited by 30, 33, 30, 20, 15, 7, 6, and, uh, and 5. We need, first, we need to organize the papers descendingly. So we already organized the paper descendingly here. And for the first paper, the condition is uh, we've got one paper which, uh, which has uh, at least one citation and it's already got 33. So the condition is met here. For, for paper number two, we've got two, two papers uh, which got each one of them uh, got at least two citation. And the, the condition is met. The first one got 33, more than two, and the, the second one got 30, more than two. For the third paper, the condition is we've got, uh, we've got three papers, uh, each of which uh, um, uh, has to get at least three citation, and the condition is met. For the fourth one is the same, for the fifth one is the same, and for the sixth one, here we have to stop. The sixth one has got six citation. And the condition here, we've got six papers, each of which got at least six citation. Six citations. So the condition is met here. But we have to stop here because, because the other paper, the seventh paper, got five. Just five. So this is not uh, is not taken in the account of H index for this author, and the H index for this author is six. Thank you very much for your listening, and uh, I hope this was useful for you.